Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Tales and Tomes with Amy. Today I'm going to be doing the exciting bookshelf tag, and this is in honor of my brand new floating bookshelves that my husband installed for me. Like, you guys have no idea how long I've been waiting for these shelves to finally come to pass. It's just, uh, it makes me so happy to see all my books like this now. So, let's get right into it. Question number one. How many bookshelves do you have? Well, I was very particular in, you know, measuring everything. I wanted at least like 12 inches between each bookshelf. So overall, I have six bookshelves and each of these shelves are six feet long. And therefore, I have basically 36 feet worth of, you know, shelf space for my books. Question number two. How many books are on your bookshelves? Well, I just did the final tally up and not including my library books, I have about 12 library books right now, I have currently 261 books on my bookshelves and that is the majority of the books in my possession. I only have maybe 30 to 40, maximum 50 more books, but those are all very thin um, children's books from my childhood. Naturally, I don't read them um, that much anymore. That's more sentimental values, so I didn't put them on my bookshelves, and I don't think I intend to. So overall, 261 physically on the bookshelves, and overall my collection, I have about 300. Question number three. How do you organize your books? Well, certainly I'm not very meticulous in how I've sorted this all out. Um, mostly it's by genre and obviously I paid most attention to these bottom shelves because these are the ones you guys see in my backdrop but as you can see so this is basically this first shelf bottom shelf is all my classics I have everything from Arabian Nights, Dracula, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Persuasion, this is my big Shakespeare um, pile so again all the classics and then again they're not in any alphabetical Order or anything like that like just my bookshelves are just very generalized by genre and then up on the second bookshelf is basically my fantasy slash gothic novels if you will and then the third bookshelf is a combination of historical fiction and my poetry the fifth shelf is a whole bunch of books combined with my childhood and YA that I've had for a really long time and then finally the sixth shelf is a bunch of cookbooks and like atlases and like miscellaneous things that I just didn't know how to categorize so they're hidden on top. Question number four. What is the oldest book on your bookshelf? Well I'm gonna answer this in two different ways because when I first saw this question there are basically two ways one can interpret this. One is what is the absolute oldest book in terms of how when it was published like in terms of its physical age or there could be the question of how is it, is it the oldest book in terms of is it the oldest one you've had in your possession within your collection. So for that one, for being the oldest book within my collection, I think it's this um, childhood um, story called A Mare for a Young Wolf. And again, it's just a, it's just a um, children's book about a Native American boy who learns how to um, ride a horse and but there actually is a little deeper element because um, I don't know if this is true in any like actual Native American cultures that you know boys have to ride stallions and if you ride mares that's considered like you're a sissy if you dare to ride a mare I don't know if that's legitimately true in certain Native American cultures it may be in some and not others because again there are like over 500 tribes within continental US alone so but yeah that is the oldest book in my possession and you can see by how weathered it is yeah in terms of actual age of you know how old a book is this the oldest one in my collection is this little anthology of English poetry and again it's like it ranges almost like a millennia in terms of the type of poetry um, that it covers and this was published in 1907 so yeah I was looking around this is the oldest one I have and what was extra special about this I didn't get it for its age again I just wanted to have a um you know a book an anthology of you know old school poetry but a cute little treat that I got you know it was published in 1907 but actually when I opened the book after I bought it I saw this little 
piece of paper which was someone's like college assignment and as you can see this was the summer of 1931 so I thought that was a cute little historical treat and I think it really you know is a testament like some of the poems in this book again they're from the 12th century so some of these are poems that are like you know in old English that is basically German in essence and so it really says a lot about the type of how college education has changed um, over this last you know century or so because that piece of paper was from a beginner like English course and they were reading like that type of poetry and there's no way you would have college college students today try and decipher that those sort of poems anymore so yeah it, it's a it's a really cute piece of history and I'm glad I found it question number five what is the newest book on your bookshelf and again this can be interpreted well, newest as in most recently published or newest as in most recently entered my collection. So for that one, so for the one that's most recently entered my collection is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. This was the pit, this month's pick for my Gothic Literature book club and I was able to find it a, a decent used copy for six dollars including shipping. So I'm like, you know what, I'll get it. So this is the newest one that has entered my possession. And then in terms of what is the most, the newest book in terms of publication, that would be, not that one, where is it? Oh, here, ah, here. This one, Lies Like Poison by Chelsea Pitcher. And this was the book that I decided to purchase as the one brand new release that I bought for the month of November. I haven't gone around to reading beyond like page 20 because I have so many library books that I have to get through first. But basically, the premise of the story is that there are three girls, Poppy, Lily, and Belladonna. And they, when they were kids, they plotted, oh, we'll um, poison um, our friend's stepmother's tea with these, you know, poisonous flowers, Poppy, Belladonna, um, because she's so mean to our friend who is her stepson. And so they don't end up going through with it, but then years, years later, um, the stepmother actually does end up dying and actually was poisoned, but she was only poisoned with one type of plant, Belladonna, so only one of the girls is arrested. And so it's the question of who killed the step, the evil stepmother. So and again, I just thought it was a really interesting sort of kind of gothic-y, you know, mystery. And I'll let you guys know what I think. Question number six. What is the longest book on your bookshelf? Well, I don't know if this is cheating or not, but I'm defining longest as in a longest book that is literally just one novel, that is one entity. I'm not counting any sort of any of my poetry anthologies or any of my like sort of collected works where it would be a combination of novellas and whatever. So the longest book that is just literally one book, I would have to say, the longest one I have is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy and I really like this I you know people complain about like Tolstoy like War and Peace oh like it's so long to get through with his writing style I can stomach you know Tolstoy and I actually enjoy it like it's not a it's not like a chore in like trying to get through Charles Dickens or anything or that like I genuinely like it and in fact Anna Karenina was the only book I read during my time in grad school and I started reading it specifically because I saw the adaptation um, from like 2012 or 13 with Kiera Knightley and I really like I really liked it and then I saw so then I read the book and I'm just like wow this is a really great story like like I don't know what it is about Russian literature but my experience is that with Russian literature they take very simple concepts but they do them and execute them so so well so a combination of red russian literature and russian cinema both my husband and i even though neither of us um speak russian or have studied um, eastern european studies in any way we both have this affinity um for russian literature and and cinema and storytelling because they do it so well question number seven what is the shortest book on your bookshelf well, after going through them, I've come to realize that the shortest book in my collection is my own poetry anthology that I self-published on Amazon. As you can see, this is my proof copy that I sent to myself and made all the necessary edits before. But if you're interested, this is my debut poetry collection, The Ghost in the Locket. It is approximately 75 pages and is available on Amazon. Question number eight. What is the predominant genre on your bookshelf? 
Well, as you can see by my backdrop and what I've kind of got go over what books I like to discuss on booktube is my predominant genres are fantasy, you know, gothic literature, and then to a lesser extent historical fiction. Those are my main categories and of course like the classics, but you know, classics, do you find classics as historical fiction? if they were written in that time. But anyway, so yeah, fantasy and gothic, that's my deal. Question number nine, have you done a bookshelf tour? No, I have not. Again, I only recently acquired my new bookshelves. I definitely will be doing a bookshelf tour in the coming months, but I'm just not ready to invest in that big project quite yet. And finally, question number 10, go on a random number generator and talk about the book that corresponds with that number. So I did, before filming the video, I did use a number generator and I decided I didn't just want to do one book, I wanted to do three. So the numbers that they spat out at me was numbers 12, 35, and 155. So the 12th book in my collection, if we start here, then that's basically how I counted my books. So book number 12 in my collection is this collected works of Victor Hugo and I remember I got this at Half Price Books and it's a really you know nice old school edition. It was actually published in 1928 so yeah I only have two um, in this edition. This I have Victor Hugo and then this one is Leo Tolstoy and so for this one this is in essence all of Victor Hugo's works with the exception of Les Miserables because you know you couldn't fit you know his magnum opus <laughs> you know in this collected works but the main thing you know I'll probably get to reading them all eventually but the main thing I'm really wanting to read in the nearish future is I need to read Hunchback of Notre Dame because I just really like that story and of course I'm a big sucker for the um, Disney adaptation and I love the character Esmeralda but I know that that is not how it goes in the original and the original is much of course darker about the corruption of the Catholic Church and all of that so that's the that's the main story of why I bought this because I need to read Hunchback of Notre Dame. And then the book that coincides with number 35 is actually one of my Shakespeare plays. It is specifically the Taming of the Shrew and I actually have you know seen this performed on stage like I have a very special relationship with Shakespeare because I grew up in a town that has its own Shakespeare festival and by extension it has its own like Elizabethan theater so like theater and more specifically Shakespeare is a huge huge part of the local culture where I grew up to the point that people had a higher than average understanding of older English and in fact I remember when I moved across country like I would say use the word shan't you know the conjunction of shall and not and there are some parts of America where they didn't even know what I was saying and I contribute that the, the only way I kind of know that as it's dying in American English is because I you know dealt with Shakespeare so much in my formative years in my hometown but yeah, Taming of the Shrew, I can't, it's a really good comedy. It's, you know, it's, you know, I think everyone pretty much knows the story. It's about these two daughters and the youngest one is really sweet and Jimur and all the guys like the youngest sister, but the father's like, you know, she can't marry until the oldest sister is married. But of course the older sister, I believe Catherine or Katerina, she is a shrew. She is in essence the old school version of a bitch and is very um, combative and aggressive and all the things that, you know, society didn't want women to be. So there's a lot of question of whether, you know, with all of Shakespeare's plays, there's the question of is Shakespeare um, endorsing the social mores of his time or is he sort of parodying it? Is he trying to have a deeper subtext about, you know, the rights of women and the role of women. But again, that's completely up to interpretation. But overall, as a comedy, I really, really like it, and especially the um, play that I went to see. The girl, the woman who played um, Catherine was really, really brilliant. And then finally, the book that corresponded with the number 155 is this anthology of Victorian prose and poetry. And again, I haven't looked too much into this book so far. Like in terms of poetry, I'm sort of keeping in the Insta 
poetry genre just for the sake of research for my um insta poet justice podcast but i did find this at half price books and i was just like you know what i don't have an anthology specifically for the victorian period and so i got it just for the sake of that and so basically i have an anthology for the romantic period i have the one for the victorian period and then i have one for you know the sort of late 19th early 20th century so i just so just for my own peace of mind i like to have these anthologies representing different periods of time so that if ever I need to like look into them like what was going on poetically or whatever during that time I have the reference to do that. And that was my bookshelf tag. Thank you so much for tuning in and tune in next time for my next video and take care everyone and be safe, wash your hands, wear masks because this pandemic after I don't want to even think about how much it's going to grow because of the travel of Thanksgiving and Christmas so just be really really careful. Take care guys. Bye.